through the way the art is presented here, I was able to understand the work that happens in the landscape. You're, you're completely engaged as a, as, as a human being. It's not, you know, it just hasn't been just created for your, for your eyes, for your mind. You know, you feel there's a real sense of embodiment here. I like the way that, that the visit was framed like that, so that there was equality given to the farm, the animals, as well as the art. I love it for the, for the immediate fact that you're walking into a non-conventional gallery space. It kind of changes the way you look at things. Everything has been done with the intention of the exhibition in mind. I love the hay bales with the hole in the middle. I really like the piece of work which is watching nature on a television screen but surrounded by nature. What does that say about us looking at, you know, at screens? Because you're in that frame of mind where you're looking at the art, you're also looking at the farm because you've clicked into that way of concentrating. Oh, hello. There's so many different types of art. And I think having it in this setting, people come in, they're not sure what to expect. But there's sort of quite challenging art here. Well, I would call it quite challenging, but it gets you to think. And I think that's what's good about it, is it's not just pictures on a wall, there's all sorts. I think, for instance, next door there's um, a, the telly screen and a sofa in a beautiful barn. I love these corrugated barns. You're sat there and you're watching the Caesars change on a really quite dull little corner of a... Um, you know, would have sort of scrap land. And you just think, well, why am I sat in the sofa watching it on telly? I'd just go outside. What was the art was clear, but then everything around it, I wasn't sure if that was part of it or not. I found it very um, confusing, but in a really good way, because it makes me realise when you go to very curated shows that you're very much led along a path. Whereas here, I think, again, Lex has done this so well, is... Um, it's just life popping, you know, what is, what is the boundary between art and, and life? You're concentrating on different things as you move around, as the art goes and the sheep turn up and the sheep disappear and then there's the pond and you see the beautiful hedge laying that's been done because there's a lot of old craft and skill here as well. So things that are very important for us to remember that shouldn't disappear. Uh, well, a lot of people, they'll just see it as a hedge. They won't realise that anything's been done to it. So to just make them think about hedge laying and the proper way of looking after a hedge, because <laughs> so many people just get the tractor and a hedge trimmer and just chop it down, don't they? It's nice to see it done in a traditional, proper way. The emphasis sometimes in some art is less on uh, technique and more on process. But I would see what goes on here at Lower Heward as a continuum between where craft and process result and technique and the process which, by which things emerge and are made are on a continuum. The art, I suppose, it gives you an opportunity to reflect on your surroundings and gives you an opportunity to access that maybe more within your leisure. I learned that art isn't just a paintbrush and and water and colour. It's a wide range of all of those many, well, many things that you can use to make art. There's one that's basically a haystack with a hole in it. And I, I love that, partly because it reminded me of having good fun in a haystack when one was little and hiding in a hole in the middle of a haystack. The hay was something, was uh, Alexa's idea really, she wanted to create something with the hay and uh, yeah, sort of just, she wanted to have as high as possible with a gap that you could see through it, so it was quite interesting how I was going to do that, but we just suddenly like, got some bales of hay, put them on the ground and it just, it just appeared. The ability or the option to walk from the main buildings down, particularly to the pond, which is the furthest point. If people are able to do that, I think actually that's a really vital part of what we're showing here because it's the it's an experiential 
um, moment and I think what happens down at the pond when you go down there and you have the water and the reflections and the trees and the plants that grow there and the light um, that is an experience which has been shaped it's been shaped by Steve who's put in the jetty and he's put in the seats it's been shaped by Alexa who over the years has thought very deeply about what she might do with that area I think the fact that this place is a, is a working farm as well as an art space is, is, is what's so wonderful about it. You know, there's a, the fact that there's people living here and people visiting and it's, it's an opportunity to talk to people and show them what you do. So it's a kind of wonderful sharing space. Ready? It hasn't been set up, so to speak. So when you're watching on landscape, you're sitting on the bales of hay and you've got the ivy shoving its way in through the wall and that hasn't been tidied up and somehow it just also becomes part of the artwork you're, you're, it's just all one your eyes are just taking it all in at once well i liked seeing how and um, how the animal was was just free um to go inside or inside its little home and just relax and be be in the grasslands it was really nice <laughs> Our relationship with food is is incredibly intense, you know, as human beings. We see f food generation as practical. It feeds us. I think as a culture, we're now moving more towards food nurturing us. We're understanding that nature nurtures us psychologically. When we're in nature, we feel better. And it so seems like a logical step that, you know, art which nurtures us, you know, in a psychological way, can you know marry with food and farming and do the same thing. The beauty of the painting is so extraordinary. That's what I saw first, the incredible rendering by Jeremy Andrews. And then of course you realise you're 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 looking at death, this beautiful young animal. And it makes me think about the realities of living on a farm where there's so much growth and proliferation and abundance. But there's also, you know, sacrifice, consumption of animal. In this country at the moment, I think for all the cookbooks, for all the television, for all the food, for all the recipes, for this food craziness, we know less about food in this country than we ever have. And so you come to a working farm, you know, it's a very creative place and and you take care with food in places like this because you see the animals, you see the labour. You have no right to throw it into the bin, so you have to use it properly. It, it doesn't take many days of work in order for a place, certainly as magical as this, to reveal itself. And it will guide you to what you could do within the place. It will give you ideas. You rarely come to a woodland or a, a, a place with ideas, a definitive plan. It will always suggest it to you as you become familiar with it. And I suppose in a way it becomes familiar with you. The very thought of you and I forget to do all those little ordinary things that everyone ought to do. I'm living in a kind of daydream. I'm happy as a queen and foolish though it may seem. To me, that's everything. The mere idea of you. I'm long here for you. You never know how slow the moments go till I'm near to you. I see your face in every flower. Your eyes and stars above, it's just the thought of you 
the very thought of you.